Hello everyone, Seraphin here. Welcome back for more Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. When I last left you guys, we had just gotten to the base portion of Chapter 25. Figure we'll go ahead and wrap that up real quick. Shouldn't take us very long. Ike is here talking to a small boy. I don't know why there are small boys here in the army, but I guess things cannot be helped. Oh, well that's, uh, that's depressing. He went to the mountains because they murdered his family. That's awful. We're gonna make him pay, right? Now oh, you bet your butt. You stay here a bit longer, okay? They said if anyone comes up the mountain single file, they'd get them all at once. It was something like that anyway. Huh. I wonder what the heck they could be talking <laughs> Kill them all! Do it for my papa! Well, alright, kid. You said it. And here we have Mr. Bastion here. Mr. Shakespeare himself, it seems like. I just wanted to talk. Apparently Bastion is largely incapable of spot peeking like a regular person here. I too am plagued by grim thoughts. Oh yeah, well, uh... <laughs> Huzzah until the end. My gosh, I, it's really hard to follow what this guy says half the time. Huh. Interesting. I would have taken measures sure and swift to see where person vanished in the night. Yikes. Alright. Yikes, like, are you kidding me? What is this nonsense? Oh, he fell asleep! <laughs> Sorry, what was that you were saying? I dozed off. Partake of a sweet and soothing draft. A beverage warm and pleasant to the lips. Oh. That is what you're offering, right? He's gonna make me fall asleep by telling me all these wonderful tales. And who the crap- holy crap, what is with this guy? That is quite the six-pack. The name's Largo, and he's a world-class berserker! Wow, yeah, looks like it. A rather dubious title. I could pin a tiger with my bare hands! That's just not... that's not just hot air either. I believe he could probably do it. Have your general hire me and see for yourself. Then you can decide how much worth I am after you see me in action. All this sounds vaguely familiar, but at least you're confident. Yeah, who does this sound like, I wonder? Watch me bend this lance! Urgh, isn't it? Aren't lances made of, like, the hefts? Not the hefts, the shafts of lances made of wood. Well, we're gonna go ahead and hire him because I don't see any reason not to. Alright, you're in. How about taking me to meet the general? I am the general. What? Again, who exactly does this sound like? Strangely enough, they know each other. You're looking hot. Almost as hot as me! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh. So it turns out the two people who are incredibly confident in their abilities and don't believe Ike is the general are know each other. Surprise, surprise, I know. Are you really gonna hire Largo, General Ike? That's the plan. Wait, he really is the general? You made, you made a good hire. After all, he's a world-class... Yeah, Berserker, I get it. Two of them, actually, at the same time. Wow, that's impressive, actually, not gonna lie. Yeah, that was awesome! <laughs> so now we actually get a new unit to, to check out here. That is Largo. He is, as he said, a Berserker. Uh, I'm not gonna... I'm not really gonna say if I think he's a world-class Berserker, quote-unquote. He's not bad, by any means. Uh, 21 strength, pretty solid. 21 skill, 20 speed, very, very good. 52 HP, that is... incredible. That's a lot of HP. Which he'll need because he's only got 10 defense and a measly 3 resistance. So he's going to be, if he gets taking hits, he might be able to decent evasion. 20 speed, 12 luck, that's pretty good. But uh, if he gets hit, he's going to be taking decent damage. And he's going to have to dip into that massive health pool he's got to rely on survivability here. He does come with A and axes though, which is nice. So he can use silver and any other kind of axe, really, right off the bat. And 21 strength, nothing to shake at. He's got a decent amount of attack behind him. No skills to speak of, which is okay. So if you're lacking a good axe wielder at this point in the game, say for example your boy just wasn't cutting it, uh, if for some reason you didn't give 
access to any of your other party members. Like you're not you're not using Jill. You're not using Oscar. I don't know why you wouldn't use any of those guys, but if you really needed a good axe wielder this late in the game, Lar you could do a lot worse than Largo. He's pretty solid for a pre-promoted Berserker. He actually, he is the only Berserker in the game. Uh, there are no other units that can promote into a Berserker. There are no pirates or brigands or any things you can recruit in this game. So if you want a Berserker, he's the only one you get. And I do believe that Berserkers enjoy the 15% critical hit bonus that they did in the GBA games. And that's most notable by the fact that he has 25 crit despite only having 21 skill. He should only have 10, but he's got 15 more than that, so he does enjoy that extra bonus. He does weigh a solid ton, too, as you can see up here. 17 weight, so he can push around a lot of people if you uh, need him to. Giving him smite as a skill is pretty good if you need him to. And he's got 15 build, which is also massive. He's good for pushing people around if you need him to. And uh, he can do some decent damage. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, that being said, we've got plenty of axe wielders already, so we probably will not be using him, unfortunately, but again, if you need someone of his caliber this late, you could do a lot worse. So, we're going to go ahead and proceed directly into the next battle here. Uh, just for clarity's sake here, I did go ahead and give some bonus experience to some of my guys to buff them up a little bit in preparation for this next chapter. I feel like we might need it. Uh, I, I believe we saw Ike cap his defense last time, so that's pretty cool. Um, it gave us some more experience and that energy drop to Jill, so she's up at 21 strength now, which is nice. Uh, she's nearly capped her defense. I believe her cap is 27. That's pretty close at hand. I believe her speed cap is like 25 or 26, so she's almost there as well. Uh, Ilyana has capped her skill. She's very close to capping magic and speed, I think five points off from each. Got a few levels left to go. 23 res is also near her cap. I believe, I believe that's also 28. Uh, Boyd I didn't really give a whole lot to. Actually, I don't think I gave him much at all. Uh, what I did give some to, however, is... Where is he? Oscar. I gave quite a few levels to Oscar. Short up his uh, weak areas. His speed's up to 20 now, which is great. 22 defense with the Night Ward. 15 res. Very solid. So he's back up at a reasonable position. Uh, Nephany, as you can see, has capped her skill and her speed, which is wonderful. Uh, she's only 4 points off from capping strength. But she's got a little way to go for defense. I believe the Halberdier cap for defense is like 28, which is ridiculous. Uh, didn't really do much with Mist. She's, she's she's really just a healer. That's all she is, honestly. And I don't need her to do anything else. I gave her that sword in the event that she needs to defend herself. And she can do reasonably good damage with it. But she's not going to be a frontline fighter or anything. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into this next chapter as soon as I save real quick. And this one is going to be a little messy. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Uh, this one is... Probably on par with annoying as the bridge chapter was back in twenty chapter twenty three. Uh, it might actually, in some ways, be worse, and you'll see why in just a moment. So we're meeting up with a galleon encampment. They are just over the mountains, and we're gonna finally join forces with our beastly friends. And apparently, the king is gathering all of his forces at the capital. Of course, he is. Why wouldn't he be? Apparently, there's an ambush waiting for us. We went around it would take us days so we're gonna have to speed things up and go right through them and ronald's like wait what you guys are gonna spring the trap and just pretend it's not gonna be a big deal yep that's exactly what we're doing and here is said trap and if you can see already why this is gonna be a pain in the neck well you're ahead of the game a little bit but i'll explain in a minute if you haven't gotten it yet so this guy grommel Listen up, men. Let's get as close as possible before pushing the rocks over the cliff. Yep. So they have a bunch of big-ass boulders camped on top of these positions that they're on, and it's all a big uphill battle, quite literally. And they will push those rocks down at us, and they will suck. Those boulders don't didn't get up there all by themselves. Are they seriously going to roll them down on us? Oh, you better believe it. A simplistic trap, but these narrow paths make avoiding them impossible. They may be surprisingly effective. You are correct, sir. We run up the mountain as quickly as possible and smash the commander, right? Yeah, you got it, Ronald. I know, genius. I love Ronald, he's amazing. Actually, that is the best plan. Try to avoid them as much as possible and get up there and beat some sense into their boss and then get the heck out of Dodge. Alright. So, let's see who we're going to bring for this one. We're going to bring the usual crew. I don't see any... We're pretty much well established with our general core team here at this point, and there's no reason really to change that. Uh, we, got, we have one more person we could bring. We could bring someone like Tanith or Har. Having flyers in this map is very, very nice. 
And having a heart around would actually be pretty nice. Uh, he's got really good stats, so I'm seriously considering it at this juncture. I don't think we need Soth to bring anything to, st to steal anything, rather. I mean, honestly, we could just use Largo, who we just got. That would not be a terrible idea. He's pretty much in the same ballpark, although Har does have the ability to fly. And is also much bulkier, so it might not be a bad idea to, if we're going to bring anybody to bring uh, somebody like Har or somebody like... Uh, but you know what, let's take a look and see if there's anything worth stealing on this map. I don't remember if there is, but I don't think so. Uh, as you can see, though, this is all one big uphill battle. There's this big smattering center area, just one big rocky cliff that we cannot pass. However, those rocks can roll right down the cliff and right into our dudes. Uh, this is a route chapter, so just killing the boss isn't good enough. We actually need to kill all the enemy units on this map to win. And here we have the boss, Grommel. He has a Bolt Axe. Uh, this is very similar to that Flame Lance that Patrine had that we, that we got her to drop. This is the axe form of that weapon, and it shoots lightning bolts rather than... It doesn't do physical damage, it does magical, just like the Flame Lance does. And the boss actually has really good magic to use it, which is surprising. You don't generally see magic that high on a wyvern, but... Uh, the nice thing about Grommel is, even though he's pretty bulky, has good strength and magic, his speed is awful. Uh, pretty much everybody in our army will double him without any trouble. And this thing, it doesn't weigh him down at all, but it doesn't matter. 11 speed is just awful. That being said, anybody with low resistance is going to have a hard time uh, contending with him. So we're going to bring somebody with passable resistance at any rate and see if they can take him out quickly. He does also have Resolve as a skill, which is incredibly annoying. Meaning when he is below half health, uh, his strength, skill, and speed are increased by 50%. Which means he's going to be a lot harder to hit. He'll have gained a lot of extra avoid. He'll gain extra ability to hit things, and he'll also gain a slight bonus to his crit as well. I don't actually know if it increases strength. I think that's misleading. Uh, based on the fact that in Radiant Dawn it does not do that. And I, I know Resolve got heavily nerfed in Radiant Dawn from this iteration, but uh, it, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. Either way, his strength being increased for Resolve is irrelevant. He only has a magical axe, so it doesn't really matter. But it's the avoidance and the potential crit possibilities he could get from Resolve that will be incredibly annoying. So we want to try to take him out before he reaches that threshold, if at all possible. And with 47 health, if he's at 23 or lower, he's going to trigger that. Now the other thing to contend with is these big rocks. As you might have heard in the in the intro, introduction to this level, uh, the, I don't know at what point the AI decides to trigger pushing these rocks, but they've got, what, 10 of them? Yeah, easily 10 of these rocks. It's possible to take out a lot of the guys before they push them. It's a little difficult, because rushing up here with a flyer is a good way to get yourself killed, unfortunately. Uh, the main reason for that is... Actually, there aren't any ballistas on this map, are there? Oh, there's one back here. So there's an iron ballista. This thing has absurd range, as you can see here. It can nearly reach our forces from their starting position. Very, very nearly. So if we're going to move anybody up flying-wise through this uh, cliff area, they're going to need to have the full guard, which is exactly what I gave to Jill, because we are going to be sending her up that middle path and try to distract the boss maybe take him out, and also to distract as many of these guys from behind as possible, maybe take out a few of them to avoid them pushing more of these rocks. Uh, the rocks aren't as dangerous as they might look, you might imagine. Uh, they travel really erratically too, they don't just travel in a straight line straight down. I don't exactly know how, how they're programmed to fall, I never really did math it out, or try to figure out the paths of each of these rocks. They do fall pretty consistently the same time every time they're pushed. Uh, for example, this one just falls straight down. There's nothing really impeding its progress. It just goes straight down the cliff, rolls to the back, and stops. Uh, I think the same goes for this one, just rolls straight down. However, a lot of these other ones will start slow rolling slowly, follow the, uh, you would argue, the logical path, which is this way, because it's being affected by gravity, roll down here, this way, so on and so forth. And it eventually just kind of rolls like this, down this way. So ultimately... Everybody in this little middle theater here is kind of in the way of most of the rocks. And it's really annoying. And again, I don't know what triggers the AI to decide to push the rocks, because they don't all roll at once. I know that for a fact. Uh, the only thing, too, is getting hit by one of these rocks does a flat 10 damage to whoever they roll through. That doesn't sound that bad, but it can stack up and be really dangerous. So if, for example, even if I had someone like Gatry on the field with max defense, if one of those boulders hit him, flat 10 damage. It ignores his defense. The nice thing, though, is it'll only ever do 10 damage to even somebody as frail as Racin. 
So he can potentially take a couple of them. Obviously, you don't want him to. But it is possible for him to survive a hit from one of those boulders and not die in one hit. And again, there's ten of them. That is a potential for, you know, a lot of potential damage here. Actually, there's looks like there's eleven of them. I forgot one over here. And the other thing, too, is the boulders do not stop when they hit somebody. They continue to roll through that person and continue to hit people behind them. So it is possible for a single rock to hit multiple people and do a lot of potential damage in one go. That being said, the nice thing about the rocks is they do not discriminate when it comes to hitting enemies and allies. If there are any enemy units in the way of the rock, they will also take the 10 damage. And that includes people who are in the air. You'd think they'd be able to, like, you know, fly over the rock, but no. Uh, if Jill is in the path or the boss is in the path, they will also take the damage, which is annoying. So that's the big reason why this map sucks, is those stupid rocks. And the fact that the layout of this map is just incredibly inconvenient. The only real way to progress up the hill is to go up the sides. Only potentially one person can go right up the center, maybe a couple, but if you take more than one flyer and they only have one full guard, they're going to get picked off by that ballista rather quickly. So you want to avoid that as best you can. That being said, again, there's not really an easy way to get up to the top of there. Uh, that being said, I do believe what we're gonna we're gonna do exactly what I suspected. Um, oh, I meant to check and see if there's anything to steal. Why don't we do that real quick? I don't believe there is. There rarely, there very rarely is, unfortunately, at this stage of the game. I believe there's actually more stuff to steal in hard mode than there is in normal mode, if you can believe it. But they're also a lot more flimsy with giving you free drops from people in uh, hard mode than they are in normal mode, so. Uh, we could potentially steal a physics staff from this guy, that'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Or even the men's staff that he's got there. I wouldn't be averse to that particular idea. Having a lot of physics staffs is important because they're so good. That being said, I've only really got one person capable of using them, that being missed, so I guess having a ton of them really isn't doing me a lot of good. Uh, so instead, we're gonna go ahead, we could bring someone like Joffrey, who's also very good. But I feel like Har might be better for us at this juncture, so we're going to actually bring him. And we'll keep him toward the back just because he well, he moves really fast and doesn't need the boost. We'll keep racing on hand pretty close. And I want to have one of my, I want to have one of each mage on either side here, so we'll do this. And actually we're going to need to give Har some equipment it just occurred to me, so why don't we do that? I didn't really get a whole heck of a lot for him, unfortunately. Uh, Killer X could be good. We'll give him a short... I don't want to use him too much, so we'll bring him along for, like, picking off... Oh, there's there's not really any knights on this map, huh? Bummer. You know what? Maybe we won't bring Har, I'm not really sure. Nah, that's fine. We'll just, give him, we'll just give him whatever little extra bits of stuff we've got that we don't need to worry about too much. There's no Lagoos in this... Actually, there are a couple of Lagoos in this map, aren't there? There's like a cat in one down. We'll give him a Lagoos guard. Just in case one of them tries to... In that case, we'll give him the Lagoos lance, too. He could be useful for picking off a random tiger or cat or something here and there. So we'll go ahead and save up and get started real quick. This map isn't particularly long, it's just annoying. So I'm hoping it doesn't come to the point where I need to restart it or anything. That would be incredibly irritating. So we can see again here, this is the range of the Ballista. We want to stay well outside of that particular range. Uh, I can go up as far as right in front of where Jill is. But I also want to keep in mind the boss's range, because he can also be a big pain in the neck if you're not careful. And we want to make sure Jill is out of the way of the rocks, obviously. So let's make sure we do that. There also is a bishop with a purge tome up here. He can attack up that far. So, Jill would not be... Po it wouldn't be possible for Jill to be in range, really, unless he moved really far ahead. But we're going to park her right about here, I think. We'll just, put her, we'll just bring her up as far as we can go. And we're going to give her the Tomahawk so she can retaliate at range. And it does not slow her down at all. She's well within the strength threshold of nearly every weapon she could possibly wield. Even the Brave one does not slow her down. So, she will get full four attacks with that, possibly, if she doubles anybody. That will be fun. Jill with a Brave Axe is absolutely terrifying, by the way, if you didn't guess. I me think I meant to give Nephany the Flame Lance, but I must have forgotten to. Have her having that is not bad, especially against uh, Cat Lagoos, who are vulnerable to the fire. And, but again, we need to make sure that we are out of the range of that Ballista for nearly everybody on our team. And I want to try to avoid the Falling Rocks as best I can, so... It's a lot easier said than done, unfortunately. 
as you might imagine, because it's really difficult to predict their paths exactly. They don't fall nearly as straightforward as you might imagine. And you'll get a chance to see that on the first enemy turn. They're going to push probably at least two or three of them, starting out. And we're actually going to put Nephany up here and have her throw a spear at this guy. Oh, she's one damage shy. I don't want to waste two uses of a spear. Problem is, there is some rough ground over here, too. I don't know why this constitutes rough ground, but as you can see, the cavalry have a hard time negotiating it compared to the infantry. I don't know why that is exactly, but... I'll just go ahead and take this guy out with a lightning bolt. Uh, there are onagers on either side of the paths that we are walking up. They don't do nearly as much as the ballista do, but they can definitely uh, put a pretty massive dent in some of your frailer people, and they do area of effect damage. So we're going to need to be cautious of that at the very least. Um, I'm just going to put Nephany over this way, I think. Seems like a reasonable plan. I think she's less likely to get hit on this side. I'll give her the Killer Lance in case that cat goes for her. We'll continue to move Oscar up a little bit here. And we're going to send Boyd up this way. Let's see if we can avoid as many rocks as possible here. Again, I don't know exactly what way is going to be avoiding these guys, but we're going to try our best at any rate. I'll keep Soren close behind. He is quite good at keeping himself out of the way of nastiness. I could just take that guy out right now, but I feel like that's a waste, so... Let's keep his Elwyn Tome handy. And we're going to send Har up this direction as well. I think we'll park him way out in the boonies here, so he's not in the way of any falling rocks. And we'll have Astrid come up behind here. Uh, as for healing people, that's going to be a tougher question, I think. We're going to leave... Mm, this is tough. We'll leave Racing out of the way, too, because I don't need him getting hit. Go ahead and do a quick dance... not dance, a quick song for Mr. Har here. You think Har's cool in this game, by the way. Wait till the next one. It's going to be even better. I know that's foreshadowing a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that, but it really is a lot of cool... It really is super cool to see Har in action in the next game. We'll move Mist over here. Actually, I don't want her getting picked off by the cat, so we'll leave her a little bit out of line of fire. We'll put her up this way. So I've got... Mm, we'll send Ike up the left, then. I'm not as concerned about him getting hit by people, so... Obviously, he's freaking Ike, and he's absurdly strong right now. Uh, we're going to move Har up a little bit, but not so far as to get struck by the sniper. Because that would be unfortunate if that were to happen. We'll leave him right here. Alright, let's see if I made a decent proje uh, decent projection. Jill should only take one damage from that guy. Yeah, that's what I thought. The Onager always does at least one damage. Here comes the boss. I will be doubling him. But it's probably not going to be enough to kill him. So here's Shiharim's dog. Oh, he knows who Jill is. You may ride a wyvern like your father, but you know nothing of a true knight's faithfulness. Yeah, whatever. I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're a paragon of knightlyhood, pal. She missed? All right, this guy's going to be incredibly irritating. I get the distinct impression. I may have to brave axe him to finish him off. The ballista shouldn't do much. No damage. None at all. What I like to see. Here comes a rock. First one first. Hits the cat. It's going to hit the bishop too, I believe. Yep. I don't think it hits the sniper. Whoa, not nice. It dodged it. Okay, so only, only Astrid gets hit by that first rock. That's good. If you can have only one person get hit, then you're golden. It's not likely, as I said, but it's very nice when it happens. Alright, I think Marsha can handle this cat. And damage, not great. Not awful either. And she doubles him. Nice. Marsha hasn't been getting nearly as much attention as she did early on, mostly because she's not quite as good as she is in the late game, unfortunately. As much as I love Pegasus Knights and Falco Knights, uh, in this particular game, they're not quite as good as they should be, in my opinion. If I'd given Ike and Steel Blade, he probably would have killed that guy. Oh, and this warrior has a bow, of course. I always forget that warriors can use axes and bows. You just expect them to wield them with just giant axes all the time, but a lot of the time they bust out arrows, too. A little bit irritating. Here comes a cat. 
Huh, they only pushed the one rock that time. I wonder if it's because I positioned strategically enough to avoid most of them and they didn't feel it was going to be worth it to try to push them. Alright, what does Mist have for range on this Physics Staff? I should probably calculate that. She has 19 magic, so her range should be 9 squares. So if I were to move her all the way as far as I can move her, which is right here next to Ike, she could, uh, Jill can move one more square and still be in range of it. So why don't we just go ahead and heal her now, I think. Her movement's what, 9? She can hit the sky and move back and still be just in range, I think. If I Brave Axe him, he'll die. Yeah, no kidding. And I can still afford to miss one of them. So that will be fine. And then the boss will be dead. We don't need to worry about him. Then I can just send in Jill to take out the Ballista and the Purge Bishop. And then my most of my forces should be largely okay. Alternatively, I could just leave her there, but I don't want her to get picked off by a bunch of people. So it was five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. So we're going to do that. We're just going to Brave Axe the boss down to nothing. Not often you take out the boss in the second turn of a map. I feel like I'm warp skipping. Has anybody heard of that concept? Whoa! Oh, she crit. Nice. I forgot I gave her Wrath. So, yeah, he procced Resolve right away. But me procking Wrath and doing a crit after he hit me a second time didn't work out for him. No one can withstand the might of our king. Well, you say that. But... Alright, so that's the boss down. He's arguably the biggest pain in the neck. The Ballista and the Purge Bishop being probably, actually, they're the third most annoying because the rocks are definitely the most annoying thing. I think we're going to have her keep that for now, actually. We're going to have her put down... No, her magic's awful, isn't it? I don't think it's great. We're just going to have her ditch the Bolt Axe for right now. I don't think her magic is good enough to use it with any reasonable... Yeah, she has seven magic. That's not really that good. She could probably put a dent in a couple of people, but is it worth it? Eh, not as such. Not in my opinion. I actually want to put Mist right where... Marsha is. So why don't we send Marsha up to deal with, say, the Onager? And how's her defenses looking? She's got decent defense. I'm not keen on the idea of her potentially getting whacked by those rocks. Hmm. This could be problematic. Anywhere I put her, unless it's on the... Oh, it's right here. They shouldn't hit her. If I put her right here and take out the Onager, she should be fine. Assuming she has the power to. Yeah, she's definitely got enough. And she's got enough resistance to not get touched by that mage too much. I believe she'll be out of the way of the rocks there. So that's one Onager down. That's a level up for Marsha too. Is she level 9 now, I think? Luck and res. Well... Could have been a lot worse, could have been a lot better, I suppose. Okay, so Nephany is well out of the way of most of these things, but I think if we stick if we hug the wall, I don't think they go that far. So we're just gonna have her do exactly that. We've never hugged the wall here. And then let's see. Oscar can probably handle this cat with no issues. I would imagine he probably could. Well, maybe not as well as I thought he could. I guess we'll just have Ike take care of the cat. I could try to coerce them to pushing more of the rocks down, but again, I really don't want to. And I need Mist right, well, right where Marsha was is where I needed Mist, so... Should be able to reach Jill just enough, yep, to give her a Physic. Perfect. That'll put her nearly back up to full. It's tempting to leave her in Wrath range and just have her go critical crazy pants all over everybody, but... I'd rather have her not die from a stray hit that she can't can't avoid or can't survive. I only need one hit to kill this guy. Let's see if I can make one of them happen. 67's not a, a great... Oh, jeez. Come on. Please hit him. Oh, Oscar! You jackwagon. Well, I still have Astrid here, but she's not in range. Perfect. Uh, Soren could be, but then he'd be in range of a rock. It's really not the worst thing in the world to be in range of the rocks. I, I'm kind of playing up a little more than they need to be, honestly, but... I think we just have Ilyana take out the cat and Ike will finish off the warrior. 
If Ike gets hit by a rock at the end of the world, he can take one. He can take several, probably. He's got, what, over 40 hit points? 42, I think, so yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, he's good. And we'll just have him take out this sucker. Oscar had been better. Uh, wouldn't have been an issue. Of course, Ike crits, too, completely unnecessarily. As he is wont to do. Alrighty. Now this side's gonna be a little different. Uh, Astrid can't quite get in range to get close enough. If I give her a boost with race, and she probably could. Uh, what do you say we send Har in after... This guy doesn't have any magic, does he? Oh, he does. He has shine magic. Har's got reasonable resistance, though. Ten's good. Let's see if he can skewer this poor cat. Oh, look at that. He one-shots the cat. That would be great if he hits. Please hit, Har. Oh! Dirt. Dang it, Har. Man, people with their... They're not... It's not like they have awful hit rates right now. They're just not cutting it. Man, this is irritating. I don't like this very much. I need to take out that sniper, too, while I'm at it, because I don't need him giving me any grief. Alright, I think if I progress straight upward, Raisin's not in range of any rocks. Yeah, as, as long as he's right here, we're fine. Alright, Har, let's try one more time, please. If he's right there, is he in range of rocks? But the way they roll, I don't think he is. If they rolled straight down, he would be. it would be a problem, but I don't think that's going to be a concern. Alright, 81. Come on, buddy. 81% to hit. You got this. More than 4 and 5. You have got to be kidding me. You have absolutely got to be kidding me. Alright, now I'm just angry. Alright, you know what? Screw it, I'm just gonna leave him there. I don't even care. If he gets hit by the bishop, so be it. Alright, Soren, you do your thing, pal. In fact, I'm gonna put Soren right here in front and just... He can't... can't kill the freaking warrior. Alright, you know what? This is getting way, way more annoying than I expected it to be. I'm just gonna have him kill the warrior and put Soren in the warrior space, and I think Soren will be fine. The Onager might hit him, but it's not going to do that much. Soren's got, like, what, 10 defense? I think the Onagers have, like, 18 might or something. Might it might even be, like, 20. I'm not entirely certain. You know, I should look this stuff up. Alright, and then we just deal with the Sniper. Snipers are the worst. Actually, they're not the worst. There's a lot worse guys to deal with the Snipers, but they're a pain in the neck. As you can see now, we're primarily only fighting pro uh, promoted enemies. We're, there's going to be very few, if any, really, uh, unpromoted enemies going forward. Uh, that cat does 24... 11, oh, he's 11 defense. Okay. So Sword will take a tickle from that cat if the cat goes for him, but he'll be fine. We're going to leave Astrid right here with her axe. Alright, let's see how this goes. We're gonna. I, I imagine there's going to be at least a couple rocks getting pushed down at this particular rate. That bishop is going to hurt Har a decent chunk, but he won't double him. Actually, that wasn't that bad. Bishops tend to not have very high magic in this game, which is a godsend, because otherwise they'd be a lot worse. Especially because a lot of them use staves. Once again, no damage from the ballista, which is great. Oh, well, here comes a rock. He must have... Oh, that's... that's cheap. It rolls right around the ballista cage like that? Come on. That's a bunch of bull. Alright, well this one's gonna go straight for Ike. And hit nobody else, which is fine. Again, if only one of your guys gets hit by the rock, it's really not that big a deal. Like, if the enemy gets like a twofer or a threefer, it's a lot worse, but... Oh, that one's gonna roll right... Or oh, it didn't hit Marsha, it hit the Sage. That can hit Nephany. Nope, just barely... Wow, that was weird. The AI had to have known that was gonna happen, but it pushed the rock anyway. This shouldn't do much to Marsha. No, in fact, it doesn't do anything at all, because it didn't even hit her. Always fun when that happens. Then Lug okay, the Luguz is going to go for Har, again, which is curious. You think Because the AI should know that it's going to be potentially one shot if it hits. There we go. About bloody time. 
And Har actually procced his, uh, procced his skill, I believe, there when he did that. Oh, jeez, I forgot about that Wyvern Lord. Uh, Har does have a skill. He has Guard, yeah. So in what happens then that, the way the HP bar of the cat flashed, if Har had gone first and hadn't killed the cat, he wouldn't have been able to counterattack. It's a very nice skill, and Har actually retains that in Radiant Dawn, which is great. A very overlooked skill that probably needs a lot more attention. Alright, these guys need to be dealt with. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and contend with that in the next episode, however. We're running a little long right now, so stay tuned for the conclusion of this chapter in the next episode. And until that time, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to leave a like and or a comment if you are so inclined. I would appreciate that as well. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So until next time, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.